Hello, hello, everybody. I am uh, happy to uh, discuss some things with you guys tonight about coronaviruses. So, you know, a lot has changed. Um, things have changed considerably since the original video that I posted about coronavirus. It's basically at our doorstep here in the United States, and there's a lot of panic. So it's important to remain calm and be proactive. You don't want to wait until there's a problem, whether it's with coronavirus, measles, the flu, a common cold, or any other viral infection. So let's get right into things that you can do for protection and healing from these viruses. There are various nutrients and herbs that help to support immune function, help reduce inflammation, and either stop viral or re um, reduce viral rep rep replication or other action of viruses in general, including coronaviruses. In the case of coronaviruses, um, especially this one that we are dealing with uh, recently, the recent outbreak of uh, the uh, coronavirus, the lungs are greatly affected by inflammation due to what's called acute respiratory disease syndrome, or ARDS. This is largely the case, largely the cause of the deaths from corona from the virus. As um, there's excessive inflammation and fluid buildup in the lungs, making breathing very difficult. Actually, a lot of people end up needing to be placed on a ventilator uh, because of the difficulties that the lungs experience with these particular viruses. And you want to have the best possible handle on a situation like this. So here are some things that can definitely help. I'm going to start with the nutrients, the nutritional aspect, because I think a lot of times that's downplayed uh, when the very first thing to remember is that the body cannot carry out all of the functions that it's supposed to do uh, optimally without proper nutrition, all right? So that's going to include your immune system function. You do not want to have an immune system that is on crutches, so to speak, all right? So the first things that I'm going to mention are actually probably things that you've heard about before usually regarding a, the, a common cold, okay? Zinc, that's number one. It is very important in the controlling of inflammation. Zinc deficiency is associated with elevated inflammation and worse outcomes in response to uh, sepsis, which is often experienced by individuals who are, who are dealing with coronaviruses. Getting zinc in the diet is not necessarily enough to ensure that you uh, have enough of it available for all of the functions, especially immune function, if you contract this particular disease. So while dietary nutrients are, I would say superior, it's difficult to get enough just from diet, all right? So you need to obtain about 11 milligrams per day under normal circumstances. And that's not hard, especially if you're including red meats in, in your diet. But uh, you want even more in the case of a viral in infection and respiratory distress because it's very helpful for that. Uh, zinc availability can be reduced when eating certain foods. So seed foods, what I call seed foods, um, are basically foods that are, an, in essence, grain, um, seeds rather. So that includes grains, nuts, seeds, beans, and legumes. And these things are going to inhibit your zinc levels in more ways than one. First of all, their phytic acid content binds to zinc and other minerals, preventing absorption of the zinc in your intestines. Second of all, their high copper levels, which are not very well inhibited by phytic acid, compete with zinc and lower the amount of zinc available to your cells. So when you have, if you're struggling with any viral infection, the first thing you want to do is make sure that 
if you're eating, which I know a lot of people when they're ill, they don't want to eat, but when whatever you put in your mouth at that time is so important, you want to get the most out of every bit that you do eat. So avoid seed foods, okay, during this during this particular illness or any viral infection. If you're taking zinc supplements, I suggest about 25 to 35 milligrams, but take it with food. If you don't, it can really upset your stomach. Make sure to eat lots of red meat, at least four ounces a day if you're consuming foods. If you're not, you want to just try to do the best that you can because if you're not eating, it will actually make things a lot worse. So do the best you can consuming foods, especially high quality foods. Although there's a lot of information being put out there, negative information about red meat, it is not unhealthy. Despite the tons of poor studies claiming the contrary, it is one of the best sources of zinc and um, iron. And uh, you can find high zinc also in oysters and crab legs and certain other kinds of seafood. Okay, so number two is vitamin C. These vitamin C and zinc are often things that we have heard about over the years. Oh, take a zinc lozenge or take vitamin C when you have a cold. Well, a cold is a viral infection and these two nutrients really shine with any viral infection. But I'm gonna go over some that you haven't heard a lot of, a lot about after I deal with these two. Um, vitamin C, again, it's important in general for fighting all viral infections as it is one of the necessary nutrients for, an op for optimal immune system function and sufficient intake is needed for optimal absorption of your minerals, including those minerals that are important for your immune support like zinc. Additionally, vitamin C shines as a natural anti-inflammatory. Unfortunately, most of us do not get enough of it. When it comes to ARDS, which most people end up having to deal with when they're dealing with coronaviruses, vitamin C, especially in combination with other nutrients, reduces inflammation and the fluid buildup that is uh, experienced. That, that in increased fluid buildup is one of the major problems with coronavirus and vitamin C helps clear that out more efficiently, okay? Uh, to get vitamin C, you can do that naturally obviously through high vitamin C foods. Uh, some of those that are super high in vitamin C, you're not going to get fresh. Camu Camu is very, very high in vitamin C. Um, you're not going to find it locally, most likely, unless you're in some tropical area. But you can get it powdered online, usually, usually also in Whole Foods or other health food stores. One teaspoon twice a day provides very high amounts. That would be great in order for you to uh, use as a preventative, okay? If you contract the illness, I suggest a supplement uh, that is, you know, just your random or regular uh, vitamin C over-the-counter supplement. Uh, and I would suggest 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams twice a day, which can be uh, not only help, helpful for prevention, but uh, in the case of you are now infected with the virus, you definitely want to increase those doses. But uh, even more so, if you're if you're sure, I'm sorry, if you're exposed to the virus, you want to increase the dosages. But if you're sure you're infected, you definitely want to increase it even more. You can do 2,000 milligrams every hour until you reach what they call bowel tolerance. At that point, you want to be near a toilet for the next 24 to 48 hours. When you're doing high, do uh, high amounts of vitamin C, you definitely want to uh, gradually come down off of it when you are ready to, you know, when you're feeling better or when the, you know, craziness of all of the things that are happening, the, uh, the virus has been become under control and you want to reduce your vitamin C, do not just cut it off. You want to gradually reduce it so that your body can adjust uh, there are several things that can go on when you're doing high amounts of vitamin C over time. And you do not want to just abruptly stop taking those high amounts. Just gradually reduce little by little. Now, the next one is lysine. L-Y-S-I-N-E for those who are not familiar. Uh, but lysine is an amino acid, one of the building blocks of protein. 
and it is very important for uh, various, I'm sorry, give me one second. One second, I'm having some technical difficulties. Okay, so it is very important uh, as an anti-inflammatory and uh, it's also got antiviral aspects. It is another nutrient that increases absorption of zinc. Um, it also increases your T helper cells and CD4, which can uh, reduce damage done by coronaviruses. 3,000 milligrams per day is very helpful uh, during any viral infection, not just herpes virus, which unfortunately so many, uh, so many studies focus on that particular family of viruses. So obviously it's going to be great for chicken pox. It's going to be good for shingles, but it shines for any type. Okay. It's great for any type. So those are the three nutrients that I definitely wanted to mention, but I don't want to uh, discount vitamin D because it's so important. It's so extremely important. Uh, if you if you uh, are supplementing vitamin D because most people do not get enough, that is going to be very, very helpful for your preventative measures, all right? Now, I'll talk about a few herbs that are very helpful in terms of prevention, but the first ones I wanna talk about are not necessarily about prevention uh, or helping to reduce your likelihood of contracting the virus, the first ones that I want to talk about are more so about uh, if you do contract the virus, um, they'll be helpful with the respiratory problems that can come about from it. So OSHA root, that's O-S-H-A, is um, very uh, helpful as well as chickweed, that's C-H-I-C-K-W-E-E-D. It is, these two herbs are great for the respiratory system. Um, if you're experiencing any type of respiratory distress, they will help greatly. However, they are both uh, diuretics or they're herbal, but they have diuretic effects. And so you want to drink lots and lots of water if you're taking these, but they will help tremendously with your respiratory function and um, help prevent damage and so forth. So one of the herbs that I want to talk about uh, that is antiviral is um, olive leaf. Olive leaf is not only antiviral, but, but it's also uh, anti-inflammatory, okay? So antiviral, anti-inflammatory, very great as a preventative. And helpful during a viral infection as well, okay? The other two are herbs that the average person probably has in their cabinet, thyme and chamomile. Now, we're used to hearing about chamomile in terms of uh, making a tea out of it, but you can do the same with thyme. It's not very tasty, so that's probably why you don't find it sold as a tea. However, uh, it's very, very powerful as an anti-inflammatory, which is great. Okay. I don't find it uh -oh. as a tea. Sorry. Sorry about that echo there. So if you have any questions, I think someone does. So I'm just trying to check on that. Apple cider vinegar. Hi, uh, Valeria. Hopefully I said your name properly. Um, yeah, apple cider vinegar is great. You know why apple cider vinegar is good? Because um, it actually has certain um, acids that are produced by some of our gut bacteria. And those particular um, acids are helpful for overall health, you know, health in general. And especially if you're compromised, if your immune system, or I'm sorry, if your digestive tract does not have uh, sufficient amounts of certain bacteria that would otherwise help to make acetic acid or butyric acid and things like that. 
if you're if you don't have enough bacteria to, to make sufficient amounts of that, then um, apple cider vinegar, because it has acetic acid, will be helpful just for general health. And so it will also be helpful for the immune system. To what degree though is the question. Take it, um, you can mix it with say apple juice or some type of juice, or you can mix it in water. You definitely want to dilute it if you're doing apple cider vinegar. Uh, but it's not going to be a champion in the event of contracting a, a virus. It's not going to be sufficient. It's great if you want to do that periodically as part of a regimen to help you help yourself stay healthy. But um, even better than that would be to make sure that your colonic bacteria are up to par, that they're help full and in sufficient quantities, you want to take a very good probiotic. The probiotics, because of the effect that those bacteria have on overall health, will also be good for, uh, you know, any a preventative type of regimen. Um, always, always, anything to do with your intestinal bacteria, they're very important for every kind of function in the body. Very important. They're they really need to be discussed more often um, in terms of health, but uh, definitely. So thank you for that question. And if anybody else has any additional questions, feel free to ask uh, after this video is over. That's, that'll be fine. I will definitely answer any questions that anyone has later. And I thank you for joining me. Um, I, I want to continue giving information for things that you can do uh, for viruses in general because we're kind of coming out of cold and flu season um, but we're still dealing with a lot of that too so look for more videos pertaining to that and more information about the coronaviruses thank you again for joining me rebel well as always and have a great night